Okay, so let's get started with today's presentation. So I'm Andrew Norrie, I'm the Commercial Director at 2D Repo, and today I've got with me Matthew Osmond, who is our Head of Digital Twins and our Product Manager, and who's been looking after this integration for the past few months. Morning. Uh, our agenda for today. So I'm going to take you through a bit of an intro to 3D Repo. Uh, we have got a lot of new names on today's webinar who we don't know, so I don't know how much you know about 3D Repo, so we'll be taking you through a bit of an introduction to what we do and how it, it works in the background. Um, then I'll be handing over to Matt to show you the, the viewer demo and a few use cases that we've been working on, hopefully pique some interest there. Uh, then we'll be talking about how we can get you guys involved, whether you're an existing user or uh, someone that's looking to, to implement 3D Repo. And then finally, we'll have a, an open Q&A with any of the questions that we've left. But as I said, do keep them coming in as we're going through, because it might be pertinent that we stop and answer them at that point, especially with the use cases, rather than keep jumping back and forth. Uh, so a little bit about 3D Repo. Um, we founded the company about five years ago based on a, a few key principles. One is that BIM software is too complex. So we've got things like Revit and Navisworks and MicroStation, which are great tools for the BIM user, but don't necessarily work for everyone on the project. So if we don't have something sitting in the middle, we can get what we would call a knowledge silo where we've got people who are working in BIM and people who aren't working in BIM uh, trying to communicate with each other. So 3D Repo acts as a middle ground hub for that communication. Uh, the other thing that we know is interoperability is hard. So especially on these big, large infrastructure projects like the one you see on the screen there, um, we can have multiple different formats coming from Revit, maybe IFC, DGN. Uh, how do we combine those all together into one model that everyone can easily access in the web? Uh, and we also believe that our data should be stored with no proprietary lock-in. So with 3D Repo, even if you give us a Revit file, we store the Revit file for you, but we store it as open data as well that can be used and accessed via our tools or via our API. And finally, every project's different. So again, this is really a, a key point for what we're talking about today with the use of our APIs, but we have m mainly open source software with open APIs and lots of different software development kits you can access to, to create your own projects using our technology. So the platform itself uh, sits in the clouds and a number of servers that manages 3D models and the data sitting behind them. So we can ingest 3D models directly into 3D repo, either via plugins or direct upload of the formats, depending on which one you're looking at. Um, and then you can access it in a number of ways. So main way or our flagship product is 3D repo IO, which is a web-based tool. We won't be looking at it too much today, but we will be accessing models from it, um, where you can do model coordination, data validation, change detection, your issue tracking is all in there. Uh, we do have another platform we built called PlanBase, which accesses the information from your same model store, but is for community engagement and acting, giving public access to your models for getting feedback. And we did just release another product that hopefully a lot of you have been using called 3D Send, which is a free tool for sending 3D models to and from uh, with, with your clients or people you're collaborating with. They don't need to have the actual software that you're sending. So I can send you a Revit file, you can download it, but you can also view it in a web browser completely for free. And finally, we have links in with major gaming tools like Unity and Unreal um, for creating your digital twin applications live linked to the cloud so that you can constantly update them. And this is all underpinned by our API, uh, which is what we'll be using today to integrate with Power BI, uh, but there are a whole number of other integrations that you can do, all the way from our existing plugins with Revit and Navisworks, uh, through to more ad hoc things like just pulling that data down into things like Power BI or even something simpler like Google Sheets or Excel. In terms of how you get the models into 3D Repo, I think this is really important for the point that we're making today. So 3D Repo becomes a model store that you can then pull that data and models down into things like Power BI. Uh, but you can push those models to 3D Repo in the first place through plugins. Um, so at the moment, on the Autodesk App Store, you'll find Revit and Navisworks plugins for doing this as a Civil 3D one to be added in the coming weeks. But you can also work through directly uploading those files as well. You don't need to use plugins. So if you don't have access to that software, 3D Repo is still a, a useful tool for you, which is not the case with a lot of our, our competitors. Um, so we can put a Revit file directly into 3D Repo, process it, and then pull that down into Power BI. Uh, but the bit that we're really excited about is linking to common data environments. We see this as important for people staying within their process and not exporting files out to other model collaboration platforms that aren't linked to your CDE. So we're working to um, add more and more CDEs to this list that we have at the moment. Um, and most of the others are available, just not in the, the way that these are available at the moment. They can be done on an ad hoc basis, on a client by client um, basis. 
Uh, our users tend to be a mixed bag across kind of tier one contractors, multidisciplinary consultants, and uh, major construction clients. And 3D Repo is very security conscious, so we have all of the expected ISO 9001 and 27001 certifications, as well as the new cyber security essentials. Uh, and all of the data is encrypted, whether at rest or in transit when using 3D Repo. In terms of hosting, everything that we show you today is hosted on AWS in London. Uh, there is a separate set of servers set up in Montreal, so if you are in the North America region, that might be a better bet for you as well. Uh, but we can also spin up 3D Repo on any of the other major cloud providers, so if you do have a need to be on Azure, um, that is possible for a private deployment. And we can even put it on-premise on your own servers as well. Different licensing models, different pricing, but uh, all possible depending on you or your client's requirements. Uh, so now I'm going to hand over to Matt, um, who will take you through the demo portion of today's presentation. Hello, good morning, everyone. Right, let me just uh, get my presentation going and then share my screen. Okay, Andrew, can you see my uh, first page of my PowerPoint? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so as Andrew mentioned, I'm Matthew Osmond. I'm the product manager at 3D Repo. Uh, that means I'm in charge of sort of the direction of the product. Uh, working with the developers to make sure that what we're building is something that works for our customers and works for the future of the industry. Um, so a quick breakdown of my agenda. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk about why Power BI, what is it uh, for anyone that doesn't know, although to be honest, 70% of people on the poll said that they were familiar with Power BI, so that's a massive bonus. Um, then I'm going to run you through a few demos. Then I'm going to show off one of the demos because we've, we've actually got a public deployment of one of the demos so you can play around with it yourself. Then I'm going to do a deep dive into one of the examples so that anyone who wants to see how we build these things can, can see. Uh, then we're going to show off what the roadmap looks like for this particular product development and then any other opportunities that we sort of see and, and any other use cases with this that we see. Uh, so first of all, I want to briefly explain about the 3D Repo APIs. So as Andrew mentioned, 3D Repo is sitting there. We've got these APIs. We can host them on our cloud, your cloud, or on-premise. Uh, we split those up into predominantly three subsections so model upload that's where we do things like integrating with all of the services like project wise a site pro core that you've seen um, so basically we've just got a little endpoint there that if you send a model to a web address it gets uploaded to 3d repo it's really simple to integrate 3d repo into your existing services then we've got our data api the issues of the health and safety risks uh, for this API endpoint, we've built things like the uh, safety-based power app that I built live on one of our previous webinars that you can uh, look up on our website. We can pull data in from SharePoint. Uh, we built a Microsoft Teams chat point at one point to show off. And you could even, if you wanted to, pull all of the data from your models and run it through a machine learning algorithm. Uh, although it's not something we've done yet, it's something that we're, we're waiting for someone with enough good data to put it all in 3D repo and then we can start to talk about how we can use machine learning to anticipate different things to do with models. And then finally, we've got the viewer API, which again, as Andrew mentioned, we use that to take the 3D repo viewer and put it into other experiences. So we've got a pro core integration, we've got plan base uh, and 3D send there. Uh, so that's basically breaking down our APIs into sections. Then what you can use those APIs for, uh, basically in terms of from a basic level to a complex level, uh, at the very complex end, you could rebuild 3D Repo if you wanted to using our APIs. We, we let you do everything. So if you wanted to build a new complete custom enterprise front end for 3D Repo, you could do that. Uh, but it's very complicated and you've got product support and things like that. That's why we do that and we don't expect you to. Then next one down, you've got internal custom development. So we're seeing that with a lot of consultants who want to build tools to either show off to their clients um, or to their internal users that say, okay, well, there's not anything out there that does exactly what we want, so let's build something ourselves. But you're not experienced in using 3D models and how to view them in the browser, so let us do that bit, uh, and you do the bit that is the user experience specific to your users. Next down on the complexity level, we've got low and no code tools. So we're starting to integrate with them a little bit more. Uh, so that's this sort of citizen developer concept where you can go away and build your own application that takes you through input, pushes things to a server and does certain things, whether that be mobile tools or desktop tools. Um, then further down still, we've got Power BI. So Power BI is drag and drop. Um, it's really read only. So you're not actually pushing anything back to the um, 
data set, which means that you don't have to worry as much about complicated workflows and what happens with conflicting things and stuff like that. So that's why it's a little bit simpler than building a tool in the no-code platform because you don't have to worry about some of the, the more complicated bits. And then of course, at the very basic end, we've got Excel, which as much as uh, it pains me a lot of the times to see some of the things that people do with Excel, there is no escaping the fact that Excel is uh, probably the most prolific uh, low code development platform out there and, and it will continue to be so we integrate with all of them and depending on how much work you want to do um, it, it, anything is possible so a little bit about power bi so similar to the way 3d repo uh, 3d repo works you can have power bi sitting on a server that is either on office 365 and you pay a per user subscription service or you can deploy uh, Power BI reporting services on Microsoft Azure and pay, I think it's like 500 pound a month for a reporting service uh, that you can then distribute to as many people as you want, or you can actually deploy it on-premise. So if you do have a, um, do have a particularly sensitive project, you don't have to worry about it being in the cloud. And then there is also the desktop uh, version as well, which a lot of people use, especially when they're first getting to grips with Power BI to do sort of internal tools that might help them with their day-to-day -day workflow. So Power BI could take all these data sources from pretty much anywhere, you know, whether you've got uh, data in 3D repo, whether you've got it in a SQL server somewhere or any other tools that connect with APIs, uh, SharePoint also a great one. Or if you've just got Excel, Excel documents sitting on your desktop, you can pull those into Power BI and publish them to the, um, to the service. And then once you've got that data into Power BI, you then output it into all sorts of different uh, reports. Um, and those reports, you can basically pull in all sorts of different visuals. So you could do all the basic stuff to do with uh, bar charts and line graphs and and um, and the, the sort of basic visuals that you might see in Excel. But then you've got all these extra things which really help illustrate larger data sets. So things like uh, chords, which illustrate how things move between different data sets and, and radar charts are often popular. And then specific to construction, you can also bring in Esri maps. So you can add a layer to a map that is perhaps especially related for infrastructure projects. You can add sections of road, you could um, add in um, specific platform extensions across TFL or things like that. And then also uh, Visio, which is great because it basically allows you to bring in a PDF style document, but have it interact with other data in the data set. Uh, so, all sorts of really cool tools that you can use in Power BI. So to go back to the 3D Repo API page, we're already pulling all that um, issues, health and safety risks and groups data into Power BI. And we've got this viewer API, which we're using to create all these other tools. But we started to think, well, hang on a minute. Why don't we take that viewer uh, API and put it inside the dashboard so that now you're getting the benefit of not just pulling data down into Power BI, but also being able to visualize it against the model, which is one of the key elements. Um, so what that means from a an output format, uh, an output standpoint, is that you've got your model, and maybe you select an area of the model, and maybe because you've brought in all these different data sets, you start to pull in all sorts of different information to do with quality control, perhaps con contractual information to do with tenders, uh, program information, uh, at the top there, we've got offsite manufacture, which is obviously key. And I really think that a lot of these tools really, um, really come into their own when you're talking about offsite manufacture, because you've got this uh, productability sort of process where you're tracking assets throughout the life cycle. And to be honest, there are no BIM platforms out there that out of the box will be able to track your structural steel from design to fabrication to logistics to site arrival to installation to QA check that you know that doesn't exist so why don't we make it as easy as possible for you to build your own platform uh, to achieve that so uh, examples of where we're doing this now we currently have a project with um, Innovate UK called AEC production control room uh, we're in a consortium with uh, two universities UCL and Imperial College London um, some SMEs, so that's us, Mission Room and Evifile, who are working from the technical side of things, really doing some innovative stuff there to do with data, uh, writing the data and visualizing the data to the, to the construction team. And then MACE, who are the sort of the, the overarching group that we're testing on. So we're working on Paddington Cube and Stratford Waterfront at the moment. And then other projects as well, we're working with the CDBB, 
and Southwark Council. Uh, we're working with Bride and Wood to produce a, a kind of dashboard, but the dashboard's just the output, a process uh, where you could apply for planning based on 3D models. We would extract all the data out of the 3D model and then allow and start making um, decisions about whether or not the planning approval will go through and tagging those things up to the model so that you can bring those things back into your authoring tool, maybe rev it, correct the issues and then resubmit it for planning. So uh, really reducing the sort of paper trail and things like that with planning. So on to some examples. So the first example I want to show you, and I apologize in advance if anything goes wrong, there's I've got about five demos I'm going to show you. And obviously it's very intricate the way I'm doing. So if I do slip up at any point, don't hold it against me. Um, so what we're going to do for this example is we're going to take the metadata from 3D Repo, then we're going to take program data from Aster Power Project, uh, but that could be if you're using P6, that also has a very good file format for bringing into Power BI or um, Microsoft Project or Synchro or whatever planning tool you're using really. Um, and then we're going to pull in QA um, sign-off sheets from Evi file. So that's the cloud platform, the mobile app, you go around to site, you're QA checking some welds on a on some structural steel, and you just fill it in on your uh, mobile device, and it goes back to the server, and we pull that into Power BI. And the really interesting thing, and I think the thing that sets us apart from some of the other Power BI model integrations that you might have seen, is that because 3D Repo is in workflow, we're pulling models from your uh, common data environment potentially, and we're integrating with these live programs. Is when more data sets come in. The dashboard still stays the same but it updates so you might issue more models which give you more metadata you might review your power, your uh, program which of course you will be doing over the course of the project and then obviously from a qa point of view you're raising qa sheets at a rate of knots you know several hundreds potentially every day so you need to be able to pull those in to a central location so i'm just going to skip out to uh, power bi now Pull it down onto my other screen. One moment. There we go. So hopefully you guys can see that. So I'm using the desktop version for this because I'm doing some stuff with Aster Power Project that is uh, file based. So I won't be publishing it to the live service for now, but I will show you some demonstrations with the live service later. So here I've got a structural steel model. It's fairly basic. Apologies for the basic models. It's very hard to get very large construction project files with all the accompanying demo, uh, data so we have to use relatively small models but we can support any model which works in 3 repo will work in this viewer so even the largest models we have in 3 repo will work with the, the power bi visualization so here i've got my program at the bottom and if i want to select any element of my program i can select it and see it filters in the 3d model this is obviously fully interactive so i can zoom in i can also expand it out so if I want to see the, those particular elements, I can see those, push it back again. Uh, that's all great. Uh, if I take that filter off, I can also use the uh, timeline slicer to just go to a certain section. So anything that's being constructed between the 9th of March and the 20th of April, I can even pull that down so I ignore the maybe the substructure. So that's just the superstructure. Then we're pulling in this data from every file as well. So we've got... Um, all of these QA checks and we can see whether or not we've got passes or fails. So in this period, I can see how many failures I've got. And if I select the failure, I can see which uh, QA checks have failed. Um, and then if I select the hyperlink here, it will go to every file. Obviously, I need to log in, uh, but it will go to every file and show me the relevant ticket associated with that element. So we're really integrating all these different um, tools and showing them against the 3D model. And we think this is really good because if you've got a client, you know, I was working on a project where we had to um, we had to report out key interface milestones across, I think, probably 50 subcontractors. There was about 150 key interface milestones we were reporting every week. Now, the client doesn't want to open up 3D Repo or uh, Autodesk BIM 360 or anything like that to do the model. But with 150 key interface milestones, it can get kind of confusing knowing what's what. So if you can use the model to illustrate that to them, they can basically get with the program quicker, understand what's going on and start raising some interesting questions about things. Um, so I'm conscious of time. 
So I'm not going to do any live updates in this model, uh, but we do have, so this is the same program. So I'll just, demo, I'll just show you what we're working with. If I can just get that screen done. So this is pulling in the program from Aster Power Project. I export as a CSV into a particular folder. Power BI then scrapes that folder and pulls in the latest one. There are instances where you could load in all of your programs across time to actually start to see how things change and look at the model in that sense. And then the other interesting thing about this is if I select a particular element of the model, I think I'm work because I've got a filter on somewhere. Let me. There we go. That one doesn't have a QA check. Okay. Like I said, something's not quite working because I think I updated the data incorrectly. But um, I'll show you the, the two way working when I show you the next dashboard so that you can, when you select an element, you'll be able to see the uh, QA sheets associated with that element and dive into them there. So that's the first example. Um, Andrew, I think, is monitoring questions. So if you've got any questions about anything that we're showing you, please ask them and we'll we'll chat about them in a bit. Uh, in Let's fact, just quick, Andrew, can we quickly do a couple now? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, what, what we'll do is I'll put a poll up. Um, and then while people are answering the poll, we can uh, have a chat about some questions. Yeah. OK, so. Uh, the first one is, is there a file size limit for model imports? I started typing it, but it's probably easier just to answer it, right? Uh, yeah, so there's not a strict file imports uh, limit. Um, although we do cap it to a gigabyte just to keep crazy files from coming in. There are obviously limits of what you can display in the web browser, but 3D Repo does some very advanced and uh, patented technology to do with compressing the model. So. We have really good performance on our models. We don't have any of that strange flashing when you move models around. You're always getting the full model whenever you're working in 3D Repo. Uh, yep, so can a user update the status of an element to installed in the viewer to track progress or via a QR code? I guess that would come from every file, right? Yeah, in this, so- In this situation. Uh, because we're pulling the metadata down from 3D Repo, um, as long as you have something in the model that relates to what you're doing in every file or in another platform, uh, be it a bar mark or a, or a serial number or even just a, a, a location that you can narrow down to a particular element or set of elements, as long as you record that information in your, in your um, QA tool, you'll be able to link it to the relevant model things in, in Power BI. Um, will the viewer include a manual 3D measurement tool? Um, it won't to start off with um, because we, we were quite keen to get this out and have people start using it and then we're going to really explore what people want to use it for. Uh, we don't, there's obviously a risk that we just rebuild 3D Repo back into Power BI which then gives us two platforms to support. So uh, I'll show everyone the roadmap later but yeah, we're, we're looking for that feedback to see, okay, what are the bits of 3D repo that you want to see in this viewer? Mm -hmm. uh, is there a way of telling me how much work is completed on site against program schedule and against percentage of works done? I guess, again, <laughs> it's the heavy file stuff reporting back, right? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're getting down to in terms of the uh, AEC production control room work that we're doing. It's it's a complicated question because you're basically relying on a program and um, either your weekly look aheads or your um, you make ready need documents and all your RAMs and everything all being linked together. And that's not something that Power BI can solve for you. That's something that you need to solve with your business processes. But once all that data does have some semblance of connectivity, then you could bring it all together, start to uh, link it up and, and create these sort of um, models within models of, of data uh can we import synchro model with the schedule link to the model will the schedule still be interactive yeah so, so that one you've gone you answer it that you, <laughs> so yes uh for those of you who tune into our last webinar we do have a 4d module in 3d repo that lets you play back synchro um animations with all the task information in 3D Repo and comment on health and safety risks or constructability or anything like that. Um, that activity list and 
um, relationships with the model is all accessible through the API. So you can pull all of that information back down into, um, into Power BI. Oh, did my screen stop sharing there? Sorry, I closed the, um, oh. So it was sharing the poll, so I just closed it. So now. Oh, right. Closed. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't sure what happened um, to my face. On my screen. So. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Do I keep yeah, on? We, to the next we'll yeah, we've got loads more questions, but let's let's come back to them. <laughs> That's good. Um, so looking at that last poll, we've got 57% uh, of people saying that they would be report builders, uh, which is good, uh, and and 29% saying they would be report viewers so i think it's an interesting mix we've pretty much got an even spill across every um, use case there so that's good so let me jump back to my powerpoint presentation so the next one i show you and this is pretty high level because i couldn't quite get it built in time and, and there's a few things we're missing to do with the esri maps but i would just want to give an example of what you could do for infrastructure projects so we've got the metadata and 2D lines coming in from 3D repo. So this is a new feature, it's not released yet. It's gonna be in our next release in a, in a few weeks. Uh, so we pull 2D lines through from DGN files and we're gonna keep rolling out more support for those 2D lines in other file formats. Pulling in asset information data from your asset information management system, whether that be asset wise or, or another. And then an interactive map using Esri maps. So getting the GIS data, maybe you've got all of your uh, gantries plotted on Esri maps. In this example, I had all of the infrastructure projects uh, for the UK government from 2020 to 2030 in an interactive Esri map, and you could have that interact with the 3D repo model viewer. So let me open that one up. There we go. So just gonna give it a second to load. I'll just click back to the PowerPoint while that's loading. So I don't have the interactive Esri map available now, but uh, hopefully you'll get the idea of, of what's in store with that. Uh, but I will demo the, um, the 2D lines. There it is. Sorry, I should have loaded this up when we were answering questions. So you can see the model viewer takes a little bit of time to load in. So it's just reaching out to the repo. It's saying, get me the latest model based on this uh, model ID that I've given you. And then it's gonna pull that data in. Um, this is working with the Federation. That's another thing I should uh, answer now as well. This is not just model by model viewing. You can actually pull in federations that are federations of lots of smaller models. So if you, in 3D repo in this instance, I think DGNs typically are relatively small when people produce them in MicroStation and other Bentley tools. So you're actually relying on a federation to federate 50 to 100 models all into one, and that's the one that you want to view in Power BI. So here we've got this interactive uh, loading screen, uh, uh, this interactive Power BI viewer. What we would do is if you selected one of these elements, it would have the relevant asset information load up. So you can start to search through, maybe you would look for all your single track cantilever um, gantries on the project and that would highlight them all, maybe highlight them on the map as well. So this is a very early stage one, but I just wanted to show everyone where we're getting at with what we wanna do for infrastructure. Cause I think for infrastructure, the typical BIM model viewer has never really worked very well because when you've got a, a 20 mile long stretch of smart motorways, having it all loaded is not always that helpful because you've just got this, it, it zooms out and you've just got a tiny little line. So by integrating with things like Esri, you could start to maybe split it up into mile long chunks, show the relevant bits or show all the model information for a particular thing across the whole line of route. Right, so that one was quite straightforward. The next one's gonna be a little bit more hands-on. Um, so what we're doing in this one is this is going to be a model validation. So this is going to be using the Lego house that you get when you sign up for 3D repo. Uh, so if you sign up for 3D repo now with a free account, you will have this model in your um, team space and you can play around with it. So that's why I wanted to use this one so everyone can kind of get a feel for what it means. Uh, so we're going to be pulling in groups data, metadata and issues from 3D repo. Uh, the aim of this is to track model um, validity. So 
did the designers produce the model in a in a way with all the relevant properties that I need in order to construct it? Um, although we're not doing it in this demo, you could pull in BCF data from Celebri. So if you've got your user, your power user using Celebri to do all your model validation, you can push that into 3D repo, then visualize it in Power BI so that everyone can access that classification data. So if you've if your Celebri produces 500 issues related to model failures, you can upload them all and then visualize them in the dashboard, maybe allowing people to filter depending on what's relevant to them. Uh, and then we've also been working on an integration with Planoly where we take the model plan that has been produced in their SaaS platform to say, okay, well, I'm expecting these types of elements. This is my BIM execution plan. Pull that data into a CSV file and push that into Power BI, compare that to the actual model that was produced. And because we've got all those integrations, like Andrew said, with where we're, we can pull in models from your common data environment, we could, you could build a workflow whereby as soon as a model enters your common data environment, it gets checked against the relevant um, policies according to your BIM execution plan. The dashboard is immediately updated, be it when these dashboards are working on the cloud, you can either manually refresh them, set them up for a scheduled refresh every half an hour, I think is the is the smallest amount if you're on the, the sort of lower end tier or using Microsoft Power Automate you can actually force an update remotely so you can say when the new model gets uploaded to the CDE push it to 3D Repo once 3D Repo is finished processing it update the dashboard and anyone watching that dashboard will then see that there's an update available refresh and then they'll get the latest information that's the key here is we want everyone to be working with the latest information um, so let me load up that one. And obviously, again, I regret not having this already loaded up. Um, and this is the one that we're going to go into a slightly deeper dive on. So I'm going to explain to you how it works. So let me go to 3D repo. So in my 3D repo area, I've got this federation in here, which is the Lego house, again, that everyone will have. And I've got my issue tracking over here. So I'm just looking at, let's say, the poles don't have the relevant diameter required that I needed. Um, these tiles are missing uh, a particular specification and then I can create a new one by, let's just say I don't like this particular um, element, maybe this is a non-compliant element. So I'm just gonna select it. And then using our new selection tools, we can say, okay, well, it's it, maybe this applies to all the flat tiles one by eight. So I'm gonna select them all. And then I'm gonna raise a new issue and say flat tiles one by eight non compliant and then i'll say okay the priority is maybe relatively high let's say it's in progress and let's assign it to the structural engineer for argument's sake let me save that Um, I can go through and raise uh, a load more. Like I mentioned, you can pull BCF issues through from Celebri or Navisworks if you want, and that will populate these issues. And you can also use the smart groups feature in 3D Repo to actually do some model checking yourself and set rules up. So I can say, I can go into my smart group and I can create a rule that says, okay, uh, what do we, category is system, I'm just reading it from the uh, option on the right there, I add that in, and that goes away, finds out everything um, related to that, and hopefully say that, I think I must have, there you go. So there are, okay, almost all of the elements in that model are system plates. So there's 435 elements. And if I go out from there, I can uh, color code them if I want. And then I can start to add a load of different color overrides and I can bring those into the issues as well. So I can use the groups as a means to create issues or I can just query the groups in Power BI. Now, if I switch back to Power BI, we've got the same model. Um, we're pulling in a little bit of the metadata so I can start to filter by, okay, what's on the first floor? So it's just taken a while because my, um, I think I've got too many Power BI sessions open.
there we go so we've got ground floor first floor uh maybe the roof obviously these are in slightly different order um and we can see the issues that existed in 3d repo now at the moment that issue that i just raised isn't in there because i haven't done a refresh but if i do a refresh here it's going to go away get that data and pull it through to um, the dashboard Everything's always slower when you are sharing your screen. That's what I'm finding. Okay, so that's pulled in all the latest data. That should briefly update. So, yep, flat tiles, one by eight, non compliant. If I select it, I can see the elements in the dashboard. I can also hover over it and see the screenshot that I created in Power BI. Now, the interesting thing as well is that I can select the element in the viewer. And it will show me the relative the, the relevant non-compliance that are associated with it uh, so i think i've got another one up here to do with the roof incorrect material type on the roof i could do a multi-select so if i select more than one thing it's going to tell me all the issues that are related to all of the things i've selected uh, and i can also see which issues are in progress so all of these elements have some element of validation updating in progress so maybe the architect is working on the model uh, and updating the parameters these ones are open and these ones have been closed and I can also then say, okay, what are the high, high risk elements? Um, this is then available on, um, I've published this earlier, so I have this available on my, um, on my Power BI online session. And if I refresh the data set at the minute, I don't have it set up for a scheduled refresh, but I'll refresh that data set. That's gonna pull that through remotely and then I can visualize that same dashboard in my browser uh, and then you can see that that non-compliant issue is there now andrew while we answer a few more questions and i jump into a bit of a deep dive andrew's going to share the link on the chat to 3drepo.com which has this dashboard on it so that you can interact with it and it will have that latest information in there so as i raise new issues in 3 repo they'll come through on the dashboard and, and you'll be able to see them um, so I'm guessing Andrew you're posting that yeah it's posted in the chat right now to, the, to everyone so you should be able to see it let me know if you can't um should we answer a few questions while we're here yeah perfect and I'll is, put another poll up while we're doing that Hang on. yeah there we go. is there no notification that a refresh is needed I guess that's a power bi feature right um I believe there is um but yeah, that's a Power BI thing. Uh, we can you can build into your dashboard when the last refresh was. Uh, so that's something you can look at as well. Yeah, I think the thing I want to make clear, I don't know if it comes across, that we are not here trying to sell you these dashboards. Um, <laughs> these are examples we've made of things you could do with Power BI and 3D Repo together. Um, so a lot of the questions are very specific to the dashboards. None of these are built to be taken away today and used on a project um they're built to, to show you the possibilities of what you guys could do with 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 the power of the, the tools that we're, we're supplying um is there an auto zoom when selecting the data in other visuals um so i guess it's like the, it's the viewpoint stuff can we when i create an issue can it zoom to the model yeah so that's something uh on the roadmap for development we've we've got all the apis there that that tell us what the camera position is and and we can zoom to selections uh, we just haven't built it into the power bi visual yet uh, but it's certainly coming because that's the real benefit that 3d repo offers over some of the other sort of dashboarding model viewers in the space is that we've already got that whole infrastructure for views pins as well we want to show pins in power bi and let you click them and interact with other information so yeah that's yeah. all coming yeah so anyone that uses 3d repo as the as their kind of web-based model viewer will know that, that that's already all in there and we try the idea is to start porting over as many of the features that we think are useful from 3d repo io model viewer to the power bi one uh does the metadata need to be in a certain schema if so what is this and how can it be validated before upload i guess that's really about how you build your dashboard right yeah, so um, I can dive in in a second into how we, we do the data uh, requests. Um, 
but you can make it so that your query is essentially schemaless. So however your data comes in, Power BI will be able to handle it. Now, obviously, a lot of the visuals here, this visual is asking for uh, a parameter called location. So if you upload a model and nothing has any any parameters called location, then obviously your dashboard is going to break or, or that visual is not going to work. So some consistency is needed, but you can always do things with with if your data is not 100%. Yeah, I think it depends on the use case as well, right? Like some of these ones, if you're looking at, if your dashboard has IFC, is categorizing things by IFC type, obviously the schema needs to be IFC. But if you've built it around Revit parameters, then it would be something different. Yeah, and uh, the, the great thing about IFC is a lot of those categories are standard, like IFC type and uh, type and material and things like that. So you could build a generic IFC dashboard and then every model that you've got that's an IFC gets washed through the same dashboard. Um, because you know that there's consistency. Whereas if you're using 10 different architects and they're all using Revit in slightly different ways, you'd have to make a few more concessions to do with how you how you read the data. Um, do you offer services for developing dashboards based on client requirements? Um, we're willing to help to a degree. I'll come to this a bit more at the end, um, yeah. but we will be partnering with a couple of companies as well. Um, we're not a we're not a dashboarding consultancy. We are a software developer, um, but obviously we are here to help our clients. Uh, is there a roadmap yet? Yeah, we'll be coming to that. How can I download the visual? We'll be coming to that. So I'll leave, I'll leave those for a minute for the rest of the presentation. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll jump back to that model. Um, Anyone who's not too worried about the technical stuff, uh, feel free to tune out and play around with the example that Andrew sent. I'm just gonna dive into the um, query on that one quickly so that I can show everyone how it works. Uh, can I close this poll now, yeah? Uh, yes, you can close the poll. So that's interesting. We've got 20% of people on the call haven't used Power BI at all in any sense. So hopefully this has acted as a kind of, uh, people could maybe see that it's a bit more useful than doing your dashboarding in Excel. And I would recommend it if anyone's producing weekly dashboards in Excel, just do them in Power BI because it's if you use the desktop version, it's free and it it makes your life easier. And it, it starts to drive you towards more consistent data sets and things like that. Um, and then, wow, 38% of people on the call have built dashboards. So that's interesting. Or 38% or of people that answered questions. And I think we had over 100 responses so that's a fair few of people tuning in that have built these dashboards so that's good um so what i've got here is i've got a bunch of parameters at the top uh, that's my api key uh anyone using this and thinking they can copy that and get access to all my models this is just an api key for a demo uh, environment so you all you'll get is the lego model um i've got my model id i've got the account which is the team space and the url which is 3d repo the reason the URL parameter is there is because if you want to do your own deployment, um, either on-prem or uh, in in your own cloud, uh, you will have a different URL. So the visual accounts for that, and you don't. You don't. There's have a good to question about this. It is: Does the Power BI report exist in our internal tenant, or is it added to 3D Repo's tenant, or can it be either? Um, Kind of some some stuff about pricing at five thousand pounds per month. I don't really understand, um, and how many refreshes you get for that. But it, it's in people's own tenancy, right? And you can just use it with the free desktop version as well, I presume, right? Yeah. So we did we did at one point when we were sort of mapping this out, look at hosting people's dashboards on our own tenant and paying the sort of the big money to do a Power BI reporting service. But then we realised that so much of that data is not power is not three repo data. You might want your, like I said, your fabrication factory data in there. You might want your program data in there. And we don't want to be handling all that data on our servers. So we'll just let you do it on your servers. Um, the £5,000 a month, I think, is for one of the uh, dedicated servers. That's really for, you know, big companies, you know, 1,000 plus people who are looking at dashboards and don't want to pay the £10 a user a month, but also want to keep doing lots of refreshes. So. It's a sliding scale uh, of how much you want to spend. Um, the important thing, I guess, with with regards to that spending output, is that this isn't just for the 3D repo. You can use this across all aspects of your business. The, the 3D repo is just a single use case. Um, 
so what we're doing here is we're pulling in data so we're reaching out to 3d repo we're grabbing data to do in this instance this is to do with the id map which is telling 3d repo uh telling power bi okay when when someone says this this is the unity id this is the element in the 3d model viewer that you need to to highlight or select and we drill through that and that produces um a big long table which you just kind of need just for reference and that links into your data model then we've got the metadata query so this is one of the more standard queries that you can do today even without uh wanting to use the the model viewer if you just want to pull your metadata into power bi you can do this one so again we're requesting we're requesting the data from 3d repo this is the end point uh all the way down here we're sort of converting it into a table we're pulling out the data um and then when we get down to here we uh, pull out all of that metadata so we've got this table uh to do with all of the data in key value pairs and then we pivot it out uh so that you've got this nice long table or uh, with all of your headers and all of your data in there the really useful thing about this is that the because these data these data headings are dynamic no matter what your parameters in your model it will change the data model with the relevant uh columns and i think in power bi you can have up to sixteen thousand columns in a data set now obviously that's not going to be a very efficient data set but uh you you, you can do that um the other interesting thing you can do for those of you that don't know is all of this exists in Excel as well. So you can actually run this same query in Excel and pull this data into Excel if you just want to do, you know, a few pivot tables or illustrate some issues to people. Uh, you can literally run the same query in Excel. Uh, if I close that down uh, and then go to my data relationship model. So it's fairly simple. Uh, we're linking our metadata to our ID map so that when we select a relevant aspect of the metadata it knows which 3d elements to select we're doing the same for our groups and then our issues because our selection sets in 3d repo are related to groups we link our issues to groups so that we've got this sort of through line of, of data uh, because when you select an issue the issue will say oh this is this issue requires you to select these 10 elements that exist in this group uh, very important for people who are developing their own uh, dashboards these relationships need to be bi-directional so you need to make sure that they 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 filter in both directions the reason for that is that otherwise if if you select an issue it might select the model but if you select the model it won't select the issue because that that relationship is only working one way so we need to make sure that's ticked then of course if you have the model uh if you had your program in here or your qa sheets or your any of the other data we've associated today you would just link those as additional tables through to your metadata so you would run queries to say okay well this perhaps this qa sheet is related to uh, a particular member with this serial number that serial number will be listed in your metadata which will then tell it the relevant id to, to highlight so it's very flexible that's why we built this we didn't want to have lots of buttons in here we didn't want the the report builder to have to sort of select things pull things down we wanted it to be all on the data end so that the viewers and the people who have no experience with 3d models have the most simple uh, interface so that's broadly the sort of the technical side of things uh, we can always run a, a more detailed seminar later down the line once we've got a few more users and people are really wanting to to do stuff like this um, as andrew mentioned we don't want to to start <laughs> becoming a, a power bi consultancy but uh, we know that we need to give you all the help that that we can to to make it a success um so oh i didn't change the title of this one uh, that shouldn't say roadmap that should say uh, examples so following on from those demos uh a few things that we've been thinking internally that we'd like to experiment with is you know what about pnid drawings uh, and models so if you're building a data center and you've got these pnids these sort of schematic uh, relationships between you know big bits of plant and the relevant uh, plumbing and and so on that goes with it um if you use visio or you had a pdf that, that had dynamic elements to it you select the element in the schematic and it would show you the relevant element in the model uh, also portfolio management i think this is really powerful there's a lot of search tools that you could build into uh, power bi to do with search queries uh, so if you had if you were a house builder for instance you were building houses all around the country you could bring all of your data into power bi 
search it and then find the relevant projects and show the models that are uh, related to that particular thing. So for argument's sake, um, if you were using a particular type of brick and you wanted to know where you were using it, I'm not sure why you would want to know that, but let's say there was a product recall or something uh, like that. Uh, Object Library Explorer, I think this is an interesting concept. Uh, because we allow you to upload Revit files, you could upload all of your uh, sort of library of bits, uh, you know, your components, whether that be um, walls or furniture or landscape items to 3D Repo, and then you can explore them with a Power BI dashboard that makes it really easy to skip through, find what you need, and then make sure that you're pulling that model back down into your Revit files. And then I think a really powerful one is, uh, again, from a portfolio level, if you're looking at tender opportunities, so you've got all your programs against your models, if you've got some consistency to your model, you can start to see when you're gonna need particular materials, be it concrete, uh, a particular type of cladding uh, or structural steel and start to negotiate company-wide uh, procurement agreements uh, that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to do if you were just looking at individual projects, individual models, individual data sets. Um, so those are just some things that we're hoping to sort of get percolate in, in people's minds. Um, and then finally, the roadmap. Now there's no times associated with this uh, because we're really it, it, this is months not years so uh, bear that in mind we want to do that dynamic model loading so that as you select things the model changes depending on the, the circumstances uh, we want to pull viewpoints and pins in um, from the 3d repo api and we also want to start color coding models so maybe if you dragged the um, status of the issues into a field in the Power BI visual, it would then color code the elements so you could see what was failing, similar to the way we manage groups in 3D Repo. So it's all possible. All of our APIs allow it to be there. We just need to do the, the sort of wiring up to Power BI because it's been a little bit of a learning curve because Power BI is not the friendliest platform sometimes to build stuff on, but um, we're getting there. Okay, I've been talking for far too long, so I'm gonna hand back to Andrew to, to finish up. Oh, you're muted, Andrew. Sorry about that. Uh, yep. Give me two seconds to share my screen back. Okay. Um, yeah, so I guess what is really left to cover is the what next bit and how you guys can uh, get involved and start using this. Um, can you see my screen, Matt? Yep, yep. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so for our existing users, this is available now. So that's anyone with an enterprise account with 10 plus users or a project based license. Um, you can uh, you can now start using this. So it's available to download from 3drepo.com. Just email support at 3drepo.com so we can enable your account for Power BI um, viewing. So that will make the viewer work. So the viewer is, it has got a flag on it on our back end to only work with, with paid accounts. Um, and we are, so we are offering kind of dashboarding, building workshops, uh, starting from 2K, depending on your requirements. But if you want to work with us on that, get in touch and we can scope out a project with you. Uh, for new customers, um, we're offering three month pilots of 3D repo starting from 490 a month. So that'll give you the, that minimum kind of 10 user enterprise account. And again, we can build in some of those dashboarding stuff for you as well. Um, so you can get involved even if you're not an existing 3D repo user. Um, again, if you're interested in any of that, email us to support at 3drepo.com uh, and we, we can help you out. Um, so a few more questions. You haven't looked at the questions there, Matt. Yeah, I'm just reading them out. Are you, are you, do you want me to answer a few more then? Yeah. Um, so I've just been looking at them. So someone's asking about doing a PowerShell script to create to connect things in Power BI to uh, task management and our common data and your common data environment. Um, the answer to that is absolutely. You know, there's so many powerful tools out there. We've basically laid bare 3D Repo to allow you to do anything with. So if you know how to use PowerShell, you are more than welcome to tap into the APIs. And, and do what you need to do with it. Um, do, does 3D Repo provide pre-designed coding for bringing in data to Power BI? We 
when we sign up customers based on the Andrew slide there, we will be providing these sort of template dashboards that explain how to pull the data in. Uh, there are also dashboards on our website already that help you pull in issues, risks, metadata, all those, all that stuff that's existing, just doesn't have the visual. So you can get started today by downloading that dashboard if you want and, and get yourself used to it. Yeah, I think the thing is all of them are more examples, right? Because everyone's use case is going to be slightly different as to what data you need to pull and how you need to pull it. Um, mm. So the different use cases that we put out there, we can give you as examples. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to kind of work out the, the best way to pull the data, depending on what you want to do with it once it's in Power BI. Oh, uh, and then another really good point, which I meant to mention, but I didn't, um, was someone asking about creating hyperlinks in the dashboards to the model files. Uh, and that's really good. In the same way I showed you with the EVI file links, you can embed links back to 3D Repo because 3D Repo, we designed it from the start to everything works with a hyperlink. So every issue in 3D Repo has a hyperlink that when you go to it, will take you right to the viewpoint, right to the issue, you can start commenting. So you can pull those links into Power BI. So Power BI can maybe have your headline information, but you can have you drill down into 3D repo to go do your commenting, closing out issues and things like that. Um, yeah, I think we're we're pretty much getting there now. Yeah. Uh, one more. Uh, sorry, does the custom visual work on all browsers? It works on any modern uh, browser, Safari, and any Chromium browser, so Chrome, uh, Edge. At the moment, it doesn't work on mobile. Uh, it doesn't fail out, so it, it just gives you a message saying, sorry, can't be viewed on mobile, but that is something we're working on uh, at the 3D repo level. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, I think we're, we're pretty much bang on time as well, which is awesome. Uh, so, yeah, there's still questions coming in. I guess if, if people still want to keep asking questions, we can stay on for another for another 10 minutes and, and answer yeah. questions. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't want to not answer questions, but I'm just conscious of time. So, yeah, if you have got to go, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, do email us at support at 3drepo.com with any more questions. Um, but, yeah, let's have a look through some of the others then. Um, do you foresee clients issuing their Power BI dashboard format for contractors to report against? Um, yeah i guess yeah. i guess the you you could pull subcontractor information or contractor information through into your dashboard which you can then share back and i guess that's similar yeah. to the sonic example where we're saying if you submit a planning application the data is pulled out of the model and then you receive a dashboard which then tells you any inconsistencies or or immediate failures you know let's say you're you know, you're applying for planning permission in London, but your model is somewhere in Glasgow, then obviously you're not going to get planning permission. Um, so you could do the same thing with subcontractors. And, and if you use Power Automate, you can do things with integrating with email services to say when they publish it, once it's processed, update the dashboard, send them an email saying you've had this many failures, go to the dashboard to, to see them. Um, so there's some really, really interesting use cases. Um. There's one about doing some more with synchro stuff. So I think uh, a synchro dashboard will be something we'll probably look to produce as a default one, right, Matt? Since it is a, a supported format so that people can just view their synchro stuff out of the box with a downloaded dashboard. Yeah, uh, like obviously. Obvious use case. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll look to build that in. Uh, we're still exploring, I think, uh, for, for anyone who's interested in 4D, there is a lot more coming down the pipeline on 3D Repo that's worth mentioning uh, to do with 4D. We're really exploring 4D in the web browser and what that means for collaboration. So, um, yeah, we want to make a kind of complementary, maybe we'll make a complementary dashboard as well. Mm -hmm. uh, would all parties involved need the same licensing? So with the 3D Repo stuff, um, it's we are kind of opening this up here and letting you have it for the if you're a paid user you are getting as many viewers on Power BI as you want for free because they don't have to sign into 3D Repo to join. The licensing side of it does come from the Power BI problem, right? So if you do want your data to be kind of secure in a private tenancy or all the options that Microsoft offer, then yes. Um, 
but in theory, Matt, you could just share the actual free kind of Power BI file, right, with someone. Yeah, and not yeah. So you pay anything. There, there are there are options for that. We see that a lot where people have, you know, they're struggling to get things pushed through IT policy because it's a it's a big change to to internal IT sometimes to deploy these big systems. So we do see instances where people are just passing around Power BI files and opening them on desktop, and that's still better than Excel because it's still it, you know it's the equivalent process that you were doing with Excel but a bit more detailed. Um, Yeah, there was another question I was going to answer there. So um, yeah, so from a also from a licensing point to your point, Andrew, is that because we really want to push people to, we really think that project licenses are the best. Then it it makes no difference to us whether you're a project viewer in Power BI or three repo, does it? It's it's yeah. still a project. It's still a project user. Um, we just want to give them the best experience uh, that suits their workflow. Okay, uh, I think we've covered them all. Um, any more questions, please do get in touch on support, as I said. Uh, but if not, thanks very much for joining us. The recording will be available. Um, probably might need a bit of tidying up, but uh, it will be put out by to early tomorrow at the latest, I think we'll, we'll commit to. Um, but yeah, thanks very much. Thanks, Matt. Awesome demos. Loved it. Um, yeah, and hope to meet you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bye. Andrew.